Welcome back to Honest News. I want to share something with you, brothers and sisters, to encourage you to study God's Word. It seems that that is a great need, God's people being encouraged to study. I want to help you to understand that Studying God's Word is not just about gaining knowledge. Oftentimes, God's people, they think study has to do with just acquiring knowledge, becoming knowledgeable. It is that, but it's not the same kind of knowledge of the world. It's an experiential knowledge. It's a knowledge that we acquire and apply to our lives. It's not just knowledge that goes in our head. Are you listening? It's knowledge that goes in our heart, and it changes us. Are you listening? So it's experiential knowledge. It's very important to understand that. We'll be right back after this. Praise the Lord. Let's uh, let's go to the scripture. I'm trying to use a highlighter so that I know what verses go in each study. So I hope that doesn't affect you when you're reading. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, beginning with verse... 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time to study your word, to understand your word, to receive instruction. We pray, Lord, that you bless and that you anoint, Lord, as we minister your word, that your people will gain an understanding from this message. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to be in Matthew chapter 7. In verse 13 and 14, for the basis of this message. But there is other verses we're going to be sharing with you that go along with this. That's another thing that I find many times that God's people don't do when it comes to studying God's word, is they don't allow the scripture to interpret the scripture. There are words in the Bible that have the same meaning in the Greek and the Hebrew that may not be the same word. We're going to see a lot of that in this message, in this lesson. 
So Jesus says, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Now we're going to come back to this verse, these two verses, because we're going to find that there are words in these verses that have the same meaning as in other verses. And you're going to start to see how what Jesus was saying in Matthew 7, 13, and 14 is also being said throughout the Bible, the New Testament, being confirmed over and over by the apostles. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, we're going to find that Jesus is not talking about gaining head knowledge. Notice what he says. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Does that sound like head knowledge, brothers and sisters? Learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. He's talking about a knowledge that is experienced by knowing him. Are you listening? That is, as you learn of his nature, as you learn how he is as a person. And you become like him. Because he's not talking about just head knowledge. He's talking about you and I learning how to be like him. And it's in that learning to be like Jesus that the scripture says, through becoming meek and lowly in heart, that you and I find rest unto our souls. So the more we become like Jesus, the more we should be resting. Our souls should be resting. Amen? Amen? It's as we become more meek and lowly. That, that word meek means to be self-controlled. You know what that means? That means I don't have to be in control anymore. It's not my ability to be in control anymore. Notice what he said. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Now, he's speaking to those that he says, All ye that labor and are heavy laden. He's talking to those that are troubled. 
those that are anxious, those that are not resting. He's not talking to people that are already resting. He's talking to people that need to hear this. If you go to the context of this, you'll find that they worried about everything. Right? Worried about what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, what they're going to wear. This is in the same context where the Lord said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He's trying to help them to learn how to rest. Not just in their physical body, but their soul. Their soul. John chapter 5, verse 39. Jesus says, you search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. He's speaking to the Pharisees, the self-righteous. Search the scriptures. He wasn't talking about New Testament, right? He's talking about the Old Testament. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. That's the same message for the Jew today that rejects Jesus Christ. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Are you seeing a resemblance between all these verses of scripture? Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Jesus said, come to me, come unto me, right? John 5, 39, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that you might have life. Do you see how these verses go together? Matthew eleven twenty eight again. Come unto me. And ye will not come unto me. In John 5. That you might have life. So Jesus is saying. Come unto me. And learn of me. You'll find that I'm meek and lowly in heart. And when you find that I'm meek and lowly in heart, you will find rest unto your souls. But he says, you won't come to me. He says, you search the scriptures. How many of God's people today, you search the scriptures, both New Testament and the Old Testament? but you still won't come to him. You don't want his yoke upon you, right? You don't want to come under submission to him. And you wonder why you can't rest. Why you can't seem to cease from your own labor. First Thessalonians chapter four and 11. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. What he's really saying is mind your own business. That's what he's saying. That you study to be quiet and to do your own business. And to work with your own hands as we commanded you. That you may walk honestly toward them that are without. 
and that you may have lack of nothing. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? Do you see what the Lord is offering us? If, he says, if you'll come under my yoke and learn of me, he says, you will find a place of rest where you can mind your own business, where you can be quiet. You can find a quietness, a quietness from the grind, a quietness from the toil, a quietness from the, the gnawing on the inside of strife, that gnawing that's constantly trying to get you to be in strife with others. Jesus says, I have a rest for you where you can mind your own business. I had the Lord say that to me years ago. He said, mind your own business. And when he said that to me, it was liberty. It was freedom. He wasn't speaking negative. He was telling me the truth. What rest you can experience if you mind your own business. Now, the self-righteous don't like to hear that. Are you listening? They don't like to hear, mind your own business. They want to mind everybody's business. But they wonder why they never enter into his rest. I'm talking to believers. God's people that never enter into his rest. Are you listening, people? Now, notice what he said here, study, study to be quiet. It's important to understand this because in 2 Timothy 2.15, he says it again, study to show thyself approved, accepted, pleasing. Unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Study. It's the same Greek word. Same exact Greek word. Is the word labor. Labor to show thyself approved unto God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. See, this is the labor in the kingdom. And through this labor, you and I enter into his rest. Through the labor of study. This also has to do with desire. Desire to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Remember what Jesus said. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. As you learn of me, you'll find that my burden's not heavy. My yoke is not hard. Amen. My yoke is easy. It's not difficult to serve the Lord. Amen. It's impossible to serve him if you don't learn of him. If you don't learn his nature. If you don't take his yoke upon you and learn of him, it's impossible to be like him. Impossible. That brings us to Hebrews chapter 4. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God.
for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Listen. Let us labor. So what did we learn from all the verses? What is he saying here? Let us labor. He's saying, let us study. Let us desire. Let us study, therefore, to enter in to that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. See, the Jews couldn't enter into his rest because they would not take his yoke upon them. Are you listening? Now, in the Old Testament, the false prophet was telling Judah, telling the Jews that they were going to be delivered out of Babylon before 70 years. And the true prophet, Jeremiah, came to the false prophet and said, you're putting a yoke of iron on those people because you're lying to them. And God struck that false prophet dead. God didn't change his mind. How many know God chastens those he loves? He scourges every son. He said, if you're without chastisement, he said, you're not mine. Amen. You're not going to enter into God's rest without chastening. Because it takes chastening and scourging. It takes that correction to submit yourself to his yoke. I have found that when I don't submit myself to his yoke, that that's when I'm not resting. That's when I have a hard time, when I'm not minding my own business. This, this message is not going to do you any good if you don't apply it. Are you listening, people? So when, we, when you think about studying God's word, most of the time you think about just acquiring knowledge, right? But do you really think about the fact that you're becoming like Jesus? Amen. Becoming like Jesus. Praise the Lord. To be meek and lowly in heart. To study to be quiet. To mind our own business. To live peaceably, right? It's what the scripture says. Live peaceably with all men. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. And remember that you're doing this As unto the Lord. To show thyself approved. Pleasing. Acceptable. Unto God. What is this really saying? It's saying if you please God. He will give you rest. If your ways please him. He'll give you rest. Has anybody ever experienced rest? Anybody? Now, we're not talking about just simple surface rest. Not talking about a a rest just for the physical body. Not recreational rest. If you go deeper, you'll find that he's talking about recreation. Recreation, recreation. A 
a reviving, a recreating of our soul. Are you listening? Becoming like Jesus. Recreation. That's what this word rest has to do with. And notice there's two levels of rest here. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's one level of rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Praise God. There's another level of rest that remaineth to the people of God. He that is ceased from his own labor. That's not contradictive. He says labor to enter in his rest, but then he says cease from your own labor. In other words, you and I cannot enter his rest through our own desire, through our own labor, through our own trying, our own struggling. We must desire, study, learn of him if we're going to enter into his rest. Going back to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. Now, all of this has to do with these two verses. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many are going in at the broad way. When I think of Broadway, I think of Hollywood. I think of play actors. I think of hypocrites. I think of people that are not real. Broadway. The leaven of the Pharisees, hypocrisy. Play acting. You'll never enter into his rest Play acting, being a hypocrite. Are you listening? Because straight is the gate. By the way, there's a message for the pervert. There's a message for the latter rain movement today that says that God is accepting homosexuality. The straight gate. Even, even the pervert calls, knows the difference between being perverted and being straight. Just ask them. They know. They do not identify themselves as straight. Because straight is the gate and narrow. You're too narrow-minded, Brother Joseph. You've got to be like Billy Graham. There's a wideness in God's mercy. But yet the scripture says God's way is straight and narrow. And God's way leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Isn't it interesting? The next verse speaks of false prophets. Isn't that interesting? What the Lord is saying is there's going to be those that are going to teach contrary to what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. There's going to be those that encourage you to go in the broad way that leads to destruction. But Jesus says they're false prophets. This word leadeth in the original Greek here. If you dive deep enough, you'll find it means to induce. Induce. What is it that's going to induce the labor, the birthing 
of the man-child. What's going to cause the church to give birth to the man-child? This word leadeth. You know what that means? The sooner that we find the narrow gate that leads to life, the quicker the birthing can begin. In other words, God's not waiting for us to wait on him. God is waiting on us to get into position. Anybody listening? Just as a child drops into the birthing canal, or I should say as a newborn baby, a fetus, as a child just before it's born, as it drops in, it cannot be birthed if it doesn't drop in properly. We must drop in to the narrow gate that leads to life. You're not going to do that if you don't learn of him. If you don't cease from your own labor. Isn't it interesting? That's what it's called when a woman is giving birth to a child. They call it labor pain, right? It's labor. Jesus said you must be born again. A recreation. 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 Something beautiful is being birthed, people, out of the church in this hour. Those that have learned of him, that he's meek and lowly in heart, those that have learned how to drop in to the birthing canal. Have you learned? Are you learning? You know, when a, when a baby drops into the birthing canal to be birthed, it doesn't even know what it's doing. It just naturally drops in. Are you listening? Now we see in the Old Testament that Jacob and Esau wrestled to drop in first. Are you listening? Jacob tricked his brother, grabbed a hold of his heel, and he was birthed first. And then he tricked him out of his birthright. You look down on Jacob for that? God didn't. Jacob wanted to be a winner. He was a fighter. Now, God, doesn't, God wasn't pleased with the way he did it. And God had to hone that. God had to change him. You know, the reason why Esau was bowing down to his brother as his brother was coming towards him at a time when they were at war the reason why Esau did that was not because Jacob. It's because of the change that God made in Jacob. Are you listening? Jacob was bowing himself down to his brother. Not worshiping his brother, but letting his brother know that I come in peace. You see, there was nothing about Jacob. Now, you got to understand, Esau had not seen his brother in years. Jacob is seeing Esau in his family and all the children that have been born during that time. And you look at the picture, and it looks so beautiful, doesn't it? to see them embracing each other instead of fighting each other. To see them at peace instead of war. 
falling on each other's neck and weeping. I mean, Esau wanted to kill Jacob. And yet, people, listen to me. If you think world peace is God smiling on the earth, because today they're saying when there's peace in Israel, that the Messiah has come. Listen to me. It didn't please God. God was pleased with Jacob. He said, Jacob, I've loved. Esau, I have hated. It says in the scripture, Esau could not find a place to repent. Though he sought for it carefully with tears. There was a root of bitterness inside of Esau. That he could never get the victory over. It was defiling him and those around him. It was causing him to fail of the grace of God. Just like we read in the New Testament. And there are those today that are failing of God's grace. Because they allow bitterness to take over. I'm saved, Brother Joseph. But is there a gnawing? Is there a gnawing of bitterness deep inside of you that will not allow you to rest? You want to rest so badly. You want to be at peace with God. But there's this bitterness. While Esau is wrapping his arms around his brother, and there's tears. And from the outside, it looks like, hey, everything looks good. God says there's a bitterness. You see, it was God that gave Jacob favor with his brother, people. It wasn't because Jacob was in good standing with his brother. If it wasn't for God's mercy, if it wasn't for God's grace, Esau would have killed Jacob. But God in his mercy protected Jacob and his family. The scripture says that when a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even his enemies to dwell at peace with him. Amen. We are to live peaceably with all men. Godly, peaceably. Without which holiness, without, without which no man shall see the Lord. It doesn't matter on the world scene how things may shape up to look peaceful on the surface. If there's bitterness in the heart. Don't look at the outward people. Don't look at the surface. Because the Antichrist is going to bring peace. Are you listening? Going to bring a covenant of peace. But God's not pleased with it. It leads to the abomination that brings desolation. See, God's not interested in a peace between men, a utopia without God. That's what they want today. Everybody just come together. See, in the latter rain movement, the charismatics, the teaching is 
we will all come together before the coming of Christ. In Israel, they're looking for their Messiah to lead to peace. But that peace is not pleasing the Lord. Jesus said, think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I didn't come to send peace on earth. A sword. And he's speaking of a war. He's not speaking of just light terms here. When he speaks of the sword, he's talking about war. The truth will always, always bring war against that which is wicked, that which is evil. You ever think that God condones things he didn't used to condone? Because I'm going to tell you, that's what they're teaching today in the latter rain movement. That now God is embracing homosexuality. There's, there's not more, any more bitter people on the planet than a homosexual. These perverts that try to pervert everything that is good. Are you listening? That's why I say to get your kids out of the public school. Because they mean to corrupt them. And under the Biden administration, they're going to have more rights, more liberty, more freedom to do their perverting than ever before. Are you listening, people? All that's going on right now, the laws that are being changed, is to protect the pervert. Are you listening? It's to pr protect the pervert. It's to protect the lawless. That's what the laws are being changed for. You don't think it can happen? Well, Jesus was the most holy, perfect, peaceable. He wasn't a troublemaker. Amen. He, he, he minded his own business. He said, did you not know I'd be about my father's business? And yet the Pope said that Jesus was rebellious. And I just heard Kenneth Copeland saying, that Jesus could have lied if he wanted to. But he didn't. That's what he said. He says, he could have lied. He says, but he didn't. You see what that's doing in the latter rain movement? It's planting that seed of possibility that Jesus Christ is no different than you and I. Listen to me. Jesus Christ is the word that became flesh. He is deity. He's not just a man. Amen. And the charismatic latter rain movement, they're trying to bring Jesus down to the level. We're all just like Jesus. Jesus could have lied. How, tell me, how could the truth lie? His very nature is truth. The Bible says God cannot lie. And yet those like Kenneth Copeland come along saying Jesus could have lied. Now, I find it very interesting. He didn't say this on his regular broadcast where he has the church service or whatever with all the people. He did it while he's sitting in his backyard by the lake. How many ministers picked that up when he said that? You don't think that's going to affect them? Satan's very subtle. 
those little seeds, those thoughts, because they esteem Kenneth Copeland on a very high level. All these young ministers, they aspire to be like Kenneth Copeland. He mentors them. He invites them out to his multi-million dollar mansion so he can get his hook in them. Are you listening? And then they go back to their churches with the same mentality as Kenneth Copeland. You're a God. You're a little God. Jesus was a little God. <coughs> Excuse me. You're, you're a little God. He teaches, Kenneth Copeland teaches that Adam was just as much God as God. That's what he teaches. That's what he believes. But he's not the only one. A lot of them in the latter rain movement believe this. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, learn of me. He says, you will not come to me that you might have life. See, they search the scriptures. I mean, you're talking about, I mean, Kenneth Copeland searches the scriptures, folks. Does he study them? No. He searches them. What is he looking for? A loophole. He's trying to find a way to be able to teach people what he believes. Trying to get it to fit. Are you listening? They are pernicious. They're blind leading the blind. And all the people see is his wealth. They certainly aren't listening to him. There's no way they're listening to him. If they're in their right mind. No way. Every single person that follows Kenneth Copeland, when they heard him say Jesus could have lied, that should have been a deal breaker right there. And yet they're still drinking the Kool-Aid. Suicide to the soul. Amen. They've got a form of godliness. But they won't come under his power. They will not come under the Lord Jesus Christ. They won't come under his yoke. Which is the Holy Spirit, by the way. Are you listening, people? So what do we learn today, brothers and sisters? What does it mean to study? It means to desire. It means to learn of him. To learn his nature. Praise God. To be like him. That's how you rest in the Lord, people. To be like him. To be like Jesus. We learn that we're supposed to mind our own business. That's a tough one for most of us. We think we're always got to be minding everybody else's business. Worrying about everybody else. Why does the scripture say work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? It doesn't say work out your brother or sister's salvation. It doesn't say God's people are supposed to be meddling with the world. 
The world is the world. The world is going to do wickedly. Why is that a shock to us? The wicked shall do wickedly. Why should that cause God's people to lose rest? When you see the world doing exactly what the world's supposed to do. None of these things should move us. It shouldn't even take us by surprise if we study the Bible. Remember I said to you, and I'm closing. The Lord said to me, now you're going to see prophecy fulfilled so fast. He said, my own people won't believe it, though they see it before their eyes. And like a dummy, I questioned the Lord and I said, well, Lord, if they see it before their eyes, they're going to believe it. And he graciously corrected me and said, if they don't believe my word, they're not going to believe it when they see it before their eyes. Learn of me, he said. Don't just search the scriptures. Come to me. I will give you rest. Come unto me. Learn of me. And you shall find rest unto your souls. Praise the Lord. God bless you.